Hello friends, this video on tissues part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the different types of connective tissue. So, so far we saw what is connective tissue, what, how, what, how does the structure of a connective tissue looks like. So now we will talk about the different types of connective tissue which we are going to study in detail in the next few slides. So the first connective tissue which we will talk about is blood. The next one would be the support tissue. Now even inside connective tissue we have broadly classified them into few types. So the one is blood. So blood is considered as a separate connective tissue. Then we have support tissue. There are certain connective tissue whose main function is to provide support. So under that category falls bone and cartilage. Then we have dense connective tissue and loose connective tissue. Dense connective tissue as the name says it is very dense that means maybe it, it, is, it has more fibers in the extracellular matrix the uh, proportion of fibers is more and when compared to the ground substance. So dense connective tissue are also sometimes known as fibrous connective tissue because there is more of fibers. So under this category falls the ligament and the tendon. So these ligaments and tendons help in joining bone to bone and bone to muscle. So these are dense connective tissues. Then we have loose connective tissue under which we will talk about aerolar tissue and adipose tissue. So loose connective tissue in a very similar fashion it will have lot of uh, not lot of but at least it will have some empty spaces that means in uh, like in dense connective tissue we have more of fibers in this case the ground substance also plays a role in case of loose connective tissue so these are some of the types of connective tissue which we are going to discuss in this lesson so let us start our discussion with blood so blood is a fluid connective tissue so the question here is why is blood a connective tissue? Because you might be wondering that when connective tissue is something which joins things, for example, bones, tendons, ligaments, that is quite convincing. But why is blood a connective tissue? What is it connecting? We'll see that. Now, blood consists of almost 78% of water and 22% of solids. So this is the composition. Now since blood connects different systems of the body by transporting gases, digested food, hormones and waste materials to different body parts, that is why blood is con considered as a connective tissue. What is a connective tissue? A tissue that connects different body parts. So if you look at blood, what does it do? It actually helps in transporting food or waste materials from one part of the body to another. For example, the place where excretion has to happen, it will take the waste materials and throw it there. The, to the different body parts which needs food, it will transfer it there. It will transport gases to different parts of the body, hormones and other chemicals. So it actually connects different parts of the body and that is why blood is kind of considered as a connective tissue right so if you look at it just see how blood connects different body parts so blood is flowing everywhere right so it is actually connecting all the different parts of the body so now let us look at the different blood components so what are the different components which make up blood now like every connective tissue has a matrix similarly blood also has a matrix because that that was the general structure of any connective tissue so whichever connective tissue we will now talk about be it blood bone cartilage or tendons everything will have a matrix and they will also have some cells embedded in that matrix so in case of blood what is that extracellular matrix that extracellular matrix in case of blood is known as plasma or it is also sometimes also known as blood plasma so it is a fluid matrix on which blood cells are embedded right so the basic structure will remain the same you have one matrix in that matrix you have the cells embedded that matrix is made up of fibers and ground substance so that will remain the same just that in some connective tissue the matrix the nature of the matrix will be little different in somewhere else it will be something different so in case of blood the extracellular matrix is plasma which is a fluid matrix now what are the cells that are embedded in matrix the blood cells there are many different types of cells which are embedded in the plasma so what are the different types of cells the first one is rbc that is red blood cells 
these are small cells without nucleus so you can see in this picture also they are showing this rbcs that is the red blood cells which are small cells without nucleus so this is a point to remember that these cells are without nucleus they carry oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body so this is the function of the red blood cells because as i said but blood helps in transportation now every component of blood have a specific function for example rbc will carry oxygen from lungs to different parts similarly the next component that is wbc which is also called as white blood cells what are they these are nucleated cells that means these are the cells with nucleus what do they do they help fight infection and builds that body's immune system so what is immune system now for inside the body of every individual we have a immune system which by itself fight against infections for example sometimes it might happen that some infection has entered your body by any means okay so it will try to disturb your body but there is by default an immune system of the body which will try to fight that infection now if the immune system wins you do not fall in at all but if the immune system fails then you fall in because the infection wins in that case and it infects your body and you fall in so these white blood cells make up the immune system so they fight with the infection and thus protect our bodies from getting infected easily these white blood cells live for 3 to 4 days in human body so their longevity is very less they are alive only for 3 to 4 days after which they die and then again new wbcs are formed so the formation and uh, completion of wbcs keep happening very frequently and the third component is platelets what are platelets these are smaller in size when compared to the red blood cells and wbcs they help in blood clotting have you ever seen that when when you get a cut somewhere in your finger or somewhere what happens it starts bleeding blood starts coming out but is it that the blood keeps keeps on coming out forever it is not like that after some time the blood clots right and that is where the platelets play its role so the platelets help in blood clotting therefore it prevents excessive bleeding from a person's body because if for a small cut too much of blood comes out of your body it becomes the body it becomes weak because there is very less blood left inside the body so platelets help in blood clotting so these are the three main components of blood that is red blood cells wbc that is white blood cells and the blood platelets right so now you understood the structure of blood what the, how is the structure of blood look like so blood will have an extracellular matrix which is called plasma in that plasma are embedded rbcs wbcs and platelets now rbc wbc and platelets they have their own functions like rbc will carry oxygen from lungs to different parts wbc will fight with the infection and platelets will help in blood clot again structurally also they are all different rbcs are without nucleus wbcs are with nucleus and platelets are very small in size when compared to the rbcs and wbcs now when i talk of wbcs here you can see that the picture in the picture there are so many different types of picture with all different names so these are the different components of wbc so even inside wbc you have many different types like neutrophil eosinophil basophil lymphocyte and monocyte but at present we are not going into the detail of all these different types of wbcs because this is something which you will study in your higher classes so for now whatever information is given is enough another important question that might strike your mind is why is this wbc known as white blood cells because of red blood cells it is convincing because the blood is red in color so maybe that's why it is called red blood cells but why white blood cells that is because on taking a small blood sample and doing a centrifugation of that sample it was seen that a white layer of nucleated cells was seen between the rbcs and the blood plasma and because of that white appearance of the nucleated cells they are known as white blood cells 
So under the microscope, when that blood sample was seen, it was seen that there was blood plasma, there was red blood cells, they were all red in color, but there was a white layer of nucleated cells and the nucleated cells cannot be red blood cells. So the nucleated cells, which were white in color, were termed as white blood cells. So I think we are good. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.